गुड मॉर्निंग द टॉपिक इज फ्री ट्रांसफर वाइब्रेशन ऑफ ए सैफ्ट यू कैन सी दिस इज रिटर्न ऑन द बोर्ड सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रांसफर्स वाइब्रेशन ओके प्रीवियस टू दिस वन केस वॉज एनालाइज मीन्स वन टॉपिक वॉज एनालाइज वेर लंजिट्यूडल वाइब्रेशन वॉज डिस्कस एंड हियर द वाइब्रेशन इज ट्रांसफर्स मीन्स यू कैन सी देर इज अफ्ट फिक्स एट दिस एंड एंड दिस इज द एक्सिस ऑफ द सेफ्ट ओके सो हियर इफ all the particles of the shaft vibrates perpendicular to the axis of the shaft in the direction of perpendicular to the axis of the shaft then in that case the vibration will be known as transverse vibration okay and in case of longitudinal vibration all the particles should vibrate along the axis in that case the vibration will be called longitudinal vibration anyway we are now talking about uh, transfer vibration so this is the shaft and this is the axis and there is no load applied on the shaft and here for the sake of mathematical simplicity the shaft is assumed to be massless okay if you consider the mass of the shaft also then in that case the calculation will be somewhat complicated and that thing can be learned at higher level at higher study in your higher study you can study all those things where you can consider the mass of the shaft also okay anyway so here for the sake of mathematical simplicity we are simply assuming that the shaft of the mass is negligibly small as compared to the external load which will be applied okay for the vibration so here you can see another position of the shaft where at the end of the shaft one weight w is attached this is weight w okay attached at the end so after attaching this end there is some deflection you can see the deflection is denoted by w uh, delta not w delta this is small delta this denotes the deflection okay this deflection is called or is known as static deflection because in this case there is no vibration of the shaft just after that attaching this weight w the position of the shaft becomes like this okay my sketch is not so good anyway you can easily imagine that how the deflection will occur anyway so this is the axis of the shaft and from the axis of the shaft the deflection is measured here this point this is also axis of this bent shaft okay axis of the bent shaft is this okay means axis of the bent shaft passes through this point so from this point the vertical distance which is measured to be delta that is the static deflection and uh, and what and uh, suppose this weight is having the mass m so that w can be written as w is equal to m into g means suppose this has a mass of small a and g is the acceleration due to gravity therefore weight is equal to m into g right now by any means just by using your hand or by any means you can now pull this w in the downward direction okay okay so after pulling this suppose that, that this is the final position and in this case the deflection is x and this x is known as initial deflection x is known as what initial deflection okay and if you now release the weight uh, the uh, if you now release this weight in that case this will start vibrating this will start vibrating about the mean position or the equilibrium position what is the equilibrium position this line is not the equilibrium position this line where the static deflection occurs this line is known as the equilibrium position i have written here equilibrium position or the mean position 
So with respect to this mean position, the shaft will vibrate. Okay. Means the weight will go above this equilibrium position and again it will go down the equilibrium position. And if there is no resistance, you know that this shaft is surrounded by air, so there should be some resistance of air. Okay. So if you neglect any kind of uh, any kind of restricting force, okay, then in that case this vibration will go will go on continue forever. And in that case, that will be called free vibration. That's why this term free or the adjective free has been used here. Free transfer vibration. Okay. This will go forever. The vibration will continue forever if there is no restriction, if there is no opposing force acting on the shaft. But in actual practice, there is always some opposing force which will, uh, which time ultimately stop the vibration. Okay. After some time, you will see that there is no vibration. Uh, first, what will happen? Amplitude of the vibration will go on decreasing with time and ultimately it will stop somewhere. Everything is known to you. And, uh, and what? So W was equal to mg. And if you assume S, small s, okay, this is the stiffness of the shaft. STI double F, ME double S. If S is assumed to be stiffness of the shaft, then you know that W is equal to S into delta. Stiffness means what? Uh, stiffness means load or the force part in the deflection. Okay. Force required to produce unit deflection is called stiffness. That definition is known to you. So according to that, we can write W is equal to S delta and you know that W is equal to mg. Therefore, therefore, S delta is equal to mg. This relationship is known to you. Okay, let me check whether the right hand side portion is visible or not. Yeah, it is clearly visible. So this is known to you. Okay, S delta is equal to mg. Now, uh, for this position, okay, this dotted line. Okay, for this position, what will be the required equation? So here, the force will be what? W this is force minus here the total deflection is what? x plus delta. So S multiplied by x plus delta. What is the direction of this force? Since I have written positive W so direction is of course it is in the downward direction. Okay. But depending upon the sign of this Depending upon sign of this, you will get the ultimate, the ultimate direction or the actual direction. This is the upward force, okay? S into X plus delta, X plus delta is the total deflection. So, in the next line, what you are getting? W is equal to mg and then minus Sx, then minus S delta. And since we know that S delta is equal to mg, so this S delta and mg are cancelled, okay? So, I should better write here Sx minus S delta so this S delta and this S delta are cancelled therefore resulting terms are minus Sx so you can see that S is a positive quantity X is also positive so this is actually negative quantity that means actually the direction of the force is in the upward direction okay direction is upward so since direction is upward so as soon as you re if you release the load, if you release the force by which you, you have taken the weight somewhere here, then it will start move in the it will start moving in the upward direction. Okay. So that means actually the force is in the upward direction at this position. So due to that force, there will be acceleration of this weight or the shaft. So we are now talking about this weight, the extra mass which is attached at the end of the shaft. 
So therefore, if acceleration is A, then we can easily write that M into A, M is the mass of this, okay? M into A is equal to this much, minus Sx, okay? Minus Sx, M into A, and A is what? A is acceleration, which can be, which can be uh, written to be uh, d2x dt2. So, in the next line, I am showing here, m d2x dt2, m d2x dt2 is equal to minus sx, so better to write plus sx is equal to 0. Next line is this one. So, next to this is what? You just divide both sides of this by m. So, if you divide both sides of this by m, then you will get d2x dt2, okay, plus s by m into x is equal to 0. So, this thing you will get, okay, and you know the equation for simple harmonic motion, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is equal to d2x dt2, okay, plus omega square x is equal to 0. This equation is known to you. Equation for simple harmonic motion. So comparing this and this, we can easily write that omega square is equal to S by M. Therefore, omega is equal to root over of SM. Where S is stiffness and M is mass of this weight. Okay. So omega, this is what? Angular velocity. So next task is to find out what is that thing that is a time period. Time period is equal to what? 2 pi by omega. 2 pi by omega. Okay. So you can easily write that this is equal to 2 pi into root over of m by s by using this. And frequency? Frequency is equal to 1 by t. So this will be what? 1 by 2 pi and here you will get S by M. Okay. So what was our main task? Our main task was to derive this equation. D2x dt2 plus S by M into X is equal to 0 and other things. The remaining things are known to you. Okay. Just comparing with this equation. This is the standard equation for uh, simple harmonic motion. Just comparing with this equation, we can easily write all these terms as time period, frequency, etc. Okay, so this is the uh, end of this lecture. Okay, thank you for watching this video.